Okay, there's been a more recent correction to an article that I put out recently on Motaman and on Ethiopians and their current admix that they have from a previous influx or backflow of Caucasians into Africa. This is put out by Scientific American. Error found in study of first ancient African genomes, finding that much of Africa has Eurasian ancestry, was mistaken. Let me zoom in here. An error has forced researchers to go back on their claim that humans across the whole of Africa carry DNA inherited from Eurasian migrants, as what was reported as a side note kind of recently in an article. This week the authors issued a note explaining the mistake in their October 2015 science paper on the genome of a 4,500 year old man from Ethiopia, or Moda Man. The first complete ancient human genome from Africa. The man was named after the Moda Cave, where his remains were found. For more information about the initial findings, please read that following article, where it said, First ancient African genome reveals vast Eurasian migration. So it doesn't really indicate in that that it says all across Africa, but it is just kind of a bland statement. Although the first humans left Africa some hundred thousand years ago, actually a lot before that, for they find them before that. A study published in 2013 found that some came back again around 3,000 years ago. This reverse migration has left its trace in African genomes. In the science paper, researchers confirmed this finding. The papers also suggested that populations across the continent still harbor significant ancestry from Middle Eastern farmers who were behind the back migration. Populations in East Africa, including Ethiopian Highlanders who live near Moda Cave, carried the highest level of Eurasian ancestry, but the team also found vestiges of the backflow migration in West Africans and in a pygmy, pygmy group in Central Africa, the Mbuti. Now, Andrea Monica, a population geneticist at the University of Cambridge, UK, who co-led the study, says the team made a mistake in its conclusion that the backflow reached Western and Central Africa. The movement 3,000 years ago or thereabouts was limited to Eastern Africa, he says. Incompatible software is behind this. Manita says that the error occurred when his team compared genetic variants in the ancient Ethiopian man with those in the reference human genome. Incompatibility between the two software packages used caused some variants that the Ethiopian man shared with Europeans, whose DNA forms a long chunk, a large chunk of the human reference sequence, to be removed from the analysis accidentally. This made Moda Man seem less closely related to modern European options than he actually was, and in turn made contemporary African populations appear to be more closely related to Europeans. The researchers did have a script that they could have run to harmonize the two software packages, says Manica, but someone forgot to run it. Ponta Skoglung, a population geneticist at Harvard Medical School in Boston, Mass., says that he was surprised by the claim that it was as much as 6 or 7 percent of the ancestry of West and Central African groups came from Eurasian migrants. But after obtaining the Mona Man's genome from Manica's team, he and his colleague David Reich carried out their own comparison and found no evidence for that conclusion. They informed Manica's team, who then discovered their processing error. Almost all of us agree that there was some back to Africa gene flow, and it was pretty big migration into East Africa, says Soglin. But it did not reach West and Central Africa, at least not in a detectable way. Their error also uh, undermines the paper's original conclusion that many Africans carry Neanderthal DNA inherited from Eurasians whose ancestor had inbred with the group. Yeah, it said that they had uh, under 1%, though, or something. You know, there was a max of 1%, and a lot of times they had 0.4 to 0.6 or something. But that would be like saying, okay, well, if you're 12% Caucasian, and Caucasians have Neanderthal that's 1% to 4%, 
and that Caucasian had 4%, then you'll have 0.6 from the interbreeding of that because you'll get a little bit. What they don't mention is that African Americans do have that small percentage due to about the 20% admix that they have from the slave trade that had happened. But let's continue here. Soglund praised the paper. The genome itself is just fantastic, he says, and the researchers willingness to share their data and issue a speedy note about the error. They posted it online on January 25th. When asked to confirm whether and when it would publish the researchers update, a representative for Science Journal said they couldn't uh, yet comment. Manica is not yet sure if, a sci if science will change the title of their paper. Ancient Ethiopian genome reveals extensive Eurasian admixture throughout the African continent. Well, I, I believe we saw up there that it, I don't think it was even named that in the first place, or it's already been renamed. But if the team had caught the error earlier, he says, I'm sure we would have phrased things a little differently. This article is reproduced from permission while it was first published in January 29th. And so it's kind of neat there. They found that out. But what this shows is that they actually have in Ethiopia they have a higher percentage of Caucasian inflow that's on those but then the inference that that actually spreads to the rest of Africa is really false so just a correction on that and I never really did the video to gear up on West Africans and then there was another paper that was out that actually kind of keyed on that part of it. It talked about the Ethiopians and then keyed on that part of it a little bit, and I had it lined up to do one on, but I'm not going to do one on that now because this has been found. Funny how we can trace ourselves down, and people are always checking each other, making sure, and then other people are trying to validate that, and you did that. Well, we've got some DNA over here. Let's check and see that and run it through our machine, and they go, nope. Hey, did you not run it through the little XML3 LR3 replicator? Oh, well, yeah, before we did ours, it showed that high too, but you've got to do that so it takes out that BS thing because that's incompatible. Someone figured that out. <coughs> Slowly but surely, we're figuring all this out. We think that we've got it all figured out, and then we figure out that we've, uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, okay, okay. And uh, certain people, there's so many things going on, of course, you can imagine. But what we don't need to do is misanalyze things. I think this is why people take so much time sometimes to put out papers. Quite often they have to validate it and they get peer-reviewed. Quite often in that peer review, somebody else is going to have to prove that aspect too. It's kind of like when you have a theory and then somebody else is going to have to prove it. And then they come in and go, yeah, well, we found the same thing. I put a prism up and it turns into a rainbow too. And you can go from there. Anyhow, guys, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. But this shows more of a reality of the genetics of the Ethiopians and Moda Man and how that influx did come in. And it actually states that it is much stronger than they originally posted in that paper. But yet, West Africans didn't get any of that gene flow. There appears to have been no contact until a much, much later date with any of the Sub-Saharans. Peace.